Hello YouTubers, it's Barbie J here. Welcome to my channel, June BLC. Hey to everybody, it's your girl Barbie J here with the recap and review of The Equalizer, Season 5, Episode 3, Just Fans. And I am so, so sorry I'm just now putting this out. I knew there would be no episode this week, so that's why I didn't. I, took my time it was just so much happening last week between election and other personal things so I apologize to you guys but I'm here with it now so I will do the best I can to make it an interesting review so before we get started if you are new here or if you're returning and have not subscribed to this channel as of yet please take a moment right now and hit that subscribe button then hit the notification bell and select all and it'll let you know every time I upload any new content to this channel or when I go live. Then I ask that you hit that like button, which is the thumbs up button, write a comment and join the conversation and share because sharing is caring. Okay, now that I got that out of the way, here we go. So this episode starts off with a young woman named Lily and she's putting on makeup and getting dressed up. Then when she's putting on her shoes, you see a big chain around her ankle and she looks at herself, I guess in the mirror or something and she starts crying. And now, you know, you know how the equalizer starts off. It's always something that leads us into what's going on. So now we see Robin and Vi in the kitchen when Delilah comes in smiling and she lets them know that she and Cam are now officially dating because of a heart emoji that he put on Instagram message <laughs> on IG. I'm sorry. They said IG. That's all they said. So Robin's motherly feelings kicks in and she asks Vi if she knows Cam's date of birth. <laughs> Robin's so funny. And Vi is like, you are not going to run a background check on that young man. And you know how she does it. Robin says, I wasn't. I was going to have Harry do it. <laughs> so she leaves and goes to the bar to meet her client. And now Robin gets to the bar and she chats with Mel for a bit. Then her client, Sandra, arrives and tells Robin about Lily and that she was babysitting Lily's daughter when she didn't come home to get her daughter. She knew something was wrong. We also learned that Lily is in a nasty custody battle with her ex and she feels Lily's ex is the kind of jerk that would, you know, use this against her in court. So Robin says she's going to do everything in her power to make sure Lily gets home. So Robin goes down to the sanctum to see what Harry can find out on Lily's phone and info, any info about her ex, you know, and they find out that the ex was out of town at a business meeting or something. So it can't be him at all. So then Harry finds that the phone is location is saying it's in a halfway house. So they had there because of the phone and because a man named Jesse that Lily had um, a problem with also lives there at that halfway house. So they get there and talk to Jesse, then go out to the alley and find Lily's phone. She left a message before getting snatched saying to her daughter that she just wanted a better life for her and that she loves her. And then on the other side of the country in Cali, we see Marcus on the phone with one of his sons and he's saying that he and his brother will be moving to Cali in two weeks. But then his son makes a face and gets quiet. So Marcus notices this and told him that, you know, they'll discuss it later. Then a guy from Marcus's team comes by and lets him know that he overheard some of the conversation. And he tells Marcus, raising kids with this job that they have is harder than it looks. And he probably is right about that because I think Robin gave some of the same advice later on in the episode. But now back to Harry and Robin who found out that Lily had a lot of debt and only made 62000 a year as a social worker. Then they learned two things. One, that she was a content provider with an adult subscription um, service that states models can make up to 50 grand a month. And two, that she has been getting direct deposits into account from Momentum Inc. So Robin gets Harry to go undercover at Momentum as an, uh, what, a content provider called Guitar Groove Guy. <laughs> Guitar Groove Guy. And she is on the phone, you know, with him during the, his entire time visiting there. So he meets the woman in charge named Victoria. She looks him over and then tells him from now on, he will be called the Ripped Shredder. I said, oh my goodness. And then she has like Chloe give Sebastian, um, Harry, that's Harry's name. He said it's Sebastian, a tour around the office. He sees a pic of Lily and her daughter in one of the cubicles and then create some type of 
diversion to get Chloe to leave him. You know, he kind of knocks his um guitar into her glass of wine that spills all over her. So she has to go change her clothes. But once gone, he goes over to Lily's computer and starts uploading his info onto his little travel drive. And Robin is asking him, what does he see? Has he found anything? And Harry lets her know what he has found, like pictures and notes in Lily's file drawer. And as the upload finished, Victoria came into the cubicle and asked, what is he doing? And then let him know he has a crew waiting for him in pod A. And then she left. So next we see Mel and Dee doing yoga and Dee tells Mel thanks for introducing her to yoga and then asks if, you know, she had reached out to that therapist that she goes to herself. Mel says she has an appointment but doesn't think she's ready to go and open up about what she's going through and I can understand that, you know. Well, Dee tells her it would mean the world to her if Mel at least gave it a shot because she feels it would really help her and she added that she is not trying to pressure her and will support whatever she decides. And Mel said thank you and that she'll think about it. So I guess Mel thought about it and she decides to see the therapist, even though she doesn't want to be there. And Mel tells the therapist that she had a panic attack a while ago and has had to step away from, and she couldn't say it. And the therapist said, Robin McCall, I know what she does. So I understand why you'd want to stop. And I said, why you say Robin McCall? Like Robin McCall is the issue you know I didn't, I didn't like that I don't know about the rest of y'all put it down in the comment section how y'all felt about that but something about that I didn't like the way she said like she got to step away from Robin not the job that she's doing Robin you know so Mel said I didn't say that I said stepping away temporarily Woohoo! which now we know that there is a chance that the team may someday be back together again y'all yes that's what I'm so excited about. So the therapist told her that therapy isn't for everyone. So she asked Mel to try something for her. And she wants her to do any type of artistic expression, even if it's just for her. So I don't know about it. I don't know what that's all about, but we shall see what happens. Now we see Vi and her friend Evelyn Rogers at the precinct for a citizens community outreach meeting. And Captain Curtis comes in and tastes one of the scones and asks who made it. And Evelyn throws her hand up real quick and says she did. And he asks what's in it. And so Vi is telling him and looking at Evelyn saying, isn't that what you told me? And now the Captain Curtis is looking questioningly at them knowing something is up. But he walks away and Vi tells Evelyn she is so bad. She knows Evelyn is doing all of this to attract the captain's attention. And she's realizing that Evelyn only invited her because she needs <laughs> Vi to be a wing woman for her. So now the meeting begins and partway through, the captain mentions that the community should resist crossing the line and be vigilant, not vigilantes like that woman they call the equalizer. That's crossing the line. So now, you know, Aunt Vi wasn't going to let him get away with that. And she went in knowing that all of the good her niece Robin is doing. Come on. So she starts defending Robin and going back and forth with Captain Curtis. And he looked at his wife and said, oh, now would be a good time to take a break because <laughs> he he knew he was going to look who's and be arguing with no woman. Anyway, back to Harry, who found a fingerprint on a gift box in Lily's cubicle. And the prints belong to this crazy insurance agent named Jake Marshall, who is on a website called Follow Hub using the name Beta Dude. And he is a person of interest in two other cases. And Robin feels he is progressing and wants to get him off the streets. So Robin found him and had him tied to a chair. And she asked him, where is Lily? Because he's been stalking her. He said that he didn't know. And then Robin put pressure on his shoulder joint and collarbone and two fingers with two fingers, just two fingers. And he started hollering and telling her everything you know he gave up chloe's name and said she's his girlfriend and robin's like get real buddy <laughs> if you think that you get real then he said that um he was only trying to scare lily off because she was taking chloe's followers and she was losing money to miles chloe was losing money and it wasn't fair so it was up to him to stop it i was like dude you stupid that's all I was saying. You stupid. You stupid, stupid. Anyway, so Robin shares with Harry what she has found out. You know, then he finds a video of Lily arguing with a woman right before she became missing. So Robin goes to meet her 
and finds out that Lily was asking the woman about her daughter, Sarah, who had disappeared three months ago. And they worked together at, I guess, um, Momentum. So Sarah's mother didn't think much of it because Sarah does this often, she said, and comes around when she needs money. She also says that she has been, you know, judged at church and other places because folks have seen videos of what her daughter does. So Robin tells her that she won't give up looking for them and that she let her know if she finds out anything. But she did also say that's not right, that they judged her and that um, Sarah doesn't deserve to be judged as well. So now Robin tells Harry that it's time for the shredder to make an appearance at Momentum because Robin believes Victoria is selling these young women. Then Robin gets a call from Marcus and he tells her what is going on with his sons and she gives him some advice. But something important that she did tell him is that she had a safety net with Aunt Vi. He should have arranged some sort of support system before making this call, meaning going to Cali. Now Harry arrives at the Momentum and confronts Victoria about the two dollars $300,000 deposits in her account that happen to coincide with the disappearance of two of her employees. So she threatens to call her lawyer and Harry says, great, I'll call a DA so that your lawyer have someone to argue with. I said, oh, you better go Harry, go Harry. So she asks Harry, what does he want? And he said, I want to know where those girls are. So she tells Harry that she gave a fan their real names and addresses. And Harry said, just the sort of info you go through great pains to conceal from other users. I'm like, really? She's like, that's all I did. That's all you did for $300,000. You know, that had to be a lot for $300,000. So he asked for the guy's name and she only has the username. And he said, that's not good enough. And she said, the cash was dropped off anonymously each time. So Harry said, he needs to know where the women are. And she says, she doesn't know. They could be anywhere. I was like, wow. She don't even care that they miss it and still got their websites playing where she's still getting money from it, money from it, money from it. She still generated income from their sites. Anyway, so now we see Mel setting up the bar for open mic night. She's humming. It looks like she's writing lyrics for a song to sing or something. Meanwhile, Harry is reading to Robin some poetry or something that this weird old fan has written. And she gets a hunch that he wants to dress these women up like dolls. He thinks they'll play things to him. So she asks if there's a store around that does this sort of thing, and Harry finds one. He gives Robin the address, and then she goes there. Once inside, she shows the sales lady a picture of Lily, and she says, oh, her husband sent them that pic too. And Robin tells her that's not her husband and demands a name. However, when the sales lady refused to keep their customer's privacy, Robin scares her into believing she would be an accessory to kidnapping if she didn't provide that information. So she gave Robin all of the info she had on this Daniel Fleming guy, and Robin gave it to Harry. He gave Robin the address to the Nutcase's mansion in Long Island, and of course, you know Robin went there. Meanwhile, we see Lily and Sarah in the mansion talking, and they are dressed up wearing makeup, lovely gowns, beautiful jewelry, and high heel shoes. And Lily's face is bruised because she hit Daniel with a glass of wine and tried to run in heels. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry to say, y'all, but that was the dumbest thing she could have did on her part. That was dumb. You, you don't have no escape route or nothing. You got on heels and you're going to try to run. You don't even know if his door is locked, unlocked, whatever. So anyway, so Lily is trying to get Sarah. And mind you, you know, she, she's in the mansion. She could got lost in there. She, where was she running? But anyway, so Lily is trying to get Sarah to work with her and escape. But Sarah is too far under his control to do it. So then he comes into the parlor with some, some sort of electric shock rod to teach Lily a lesson. And that's when Robin busts into the door with her gun pointed at him and then challenged him to hurt her since he likes hurting women. So they fight. Robin wins, of course. She handcuffs him. She starts to free Lily when all of a sudden Sarah picks up the gun and points it at Lily because the guy pulled out a gun after Robin beat his behind. So anyway, <laughs> she points it at Lily and tells Robin to uncuff him or else she'll shoot Lily. And Robin talks her down by letting her know, you know, you don't want her. You want me. Lily, leave Lily out of this. And she told Sarah, you're stronger than him. And to get him out of her head that her mother had said, she said, I spoke to your mother and she said you had dreams of being in the ballet. And the man is yelling, shoot him, shoot him. And Robin's like, no. And, and Lily's saying, don't listen to him, you know. 
So Sarah finally puts down the gun and the nut goes to jail and Robin takes Lily to see her daughter at the bar. I tell you, always a happy ending, ain't it? So it ends with Evelyn telling Vi that she invited Captain Curtis out for coffee. And Vi's like, good for you. She said, no, good for you because he wants to know if Vi would be coming as well. And he said that he enjoyed her pleasant exchange of, their pleasant exchange of ideas. And she said, is that what you call it? He said, yeah. And he hopes to see her again. And he knows that she made those scones. And she said, how do you know that? He said, because they have a kick that he has never tasted. Just like you. I said, ooh, 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 ooh. I, I was stuck. I'm telling you, y'all, I was stuck on never tasted. Like he ain't never tasted her too. And he bet she got a kick. I said, oh my God. Sorry, Barbie J got a dirty mind, y'all. Oh my God. So he walks away <laughs> and leaves. And Vi is sitting there shocked. Like, did he just say that? So then Marcus you know, gets a call from his son and they, uh, he tells them that they can stay in New York and that he worked things out with their mother and she's going to change her schedule around and stuff. And his son asks if it's okay with him. And he says, it's rough on all of us, but he doesn't want to uproot them right now. And he tells him that, and you know, he will be there to visit soon because his son wanted to know when he was coming. He said, you know, if I could be there today, I would, you know, anyway. So then we have Harry, he's talking to Mel about turning in early and a uh, a bottle of wine that he has waiting for them and they have a romantic evening together and she said well I just want to stay for this last act which is the rip shredder and she, she's looking around and he goes up on stage and she's looking like surprised and he gets on the mic and say yeah I'm the rip shredder <laughs> Harry so crazy and he made sing this song called hey Mel Hey Mel, hey Mel, hey Mel. He keeps going, he's, he's singing all this stuff. And she's smiling and she's feeling like really excited. And, you know, and at the end when he finished, she goes, I'm Mel, I'm Mel. <laughs> and I was great. And then the last thing was when Aunt Vi tells Robin and Delilah what happened at the community outreach meeting at the precinct with Captain Curtis. So she was going on and on about he how he was this and he how he was that. And when she finished, Robin and Delilah looked at each other and Delilah's like, oh, he sounded obnoxious. And Robin's like, yeah, uh-huh. And then she told Delilah, go ahead and ask her. And Dee said, so how cute was this Captain Curtis? <laughs> and and our advice like, what do you mean cute? What does that have to do with anything? And Robin said, you like this guy. And Dee said, she's got it bad. And Vi said, both of you are ridiculous. And they are all laughing and stuff. It's so funny. So Dee gets a call from Cam, you know, and says goodnight to them. And she leaves. Then Vi says, enough about me. How was your day? Did you speak to Dante? And Robin was saying yes and mentioned that it's getting hard, you know, because of the feelings that they have for each other and can't see each other. So then she tells Aunt Vi, over the years, you've given me a lot of wisdom. She said, let me give you some of my own. If you do like this handsome captain, don't wait too long. Let him know before it's too late. And she is speaking from experience, y'all. We know Robin is. So that's how it ended. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about this episode. I thought it was a great episode as I always do. So put your two cents about it down in the comment section. And please do not forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. It's your girl, Barbie J. Saying peace.